Here's a more expanded, richly detailed version of the script, adding 8 more paragraphs without section titles to give your video review even more depth and engagement. Dash dash dash. The HAL Tejas MK2 stands as a symbol of India's growing ambition in aerospace. Building on the success of earlier Tejas variants, this aircraft represents a considerable leap forward, a larger, more capable fighter that is being designed to meet not just current operational needs but future threats too. Its development is deeply tied to India's push for self-reliance in defense, with a high percentage of indigenous systems in manufacturing. Over 60% of the first prototype structure has already been completed, with wings, fuselage, and engine integration progressing steadily, showing that HAL is serious about meeting its aggressive schedule. This jet's physical design is quite striking. Compared to the earlier Tejas, the MK2 has a longer fuselage and incorporates close-coupled canards just ahead of its delta wings. These small winglets help with maneuverability, allowing the aircraft to perform tighter turns and more agile aerial movements. The use of advanced composite materials and radar-absorbing structures means its radar cross-section is significantly reduced, reportedly down to only about 25% of what the MK-1A had, giving it a modest level of stealth. From an avionics and cockpit perspective, MK-2's design leans heavily into modern, pilot-friendly systems. Instead of rows of switches, pilots get a big, touch-sensitive wide-area display, complemented by a holographic head-up display. There's a hands-on throttle and stick setup HOTAS, which means pilots can manage weapons and flying controls without having to take their hands off the sticker throttle. This reduces pilot workload, especially during high-stress, complex missions. One of the crown jewels of this aircraft is the UTOM Active Electronically Scanned Array AESA, radar, developed by DRDO's LRDE. The version for the MK2 is said to use gallium nitride GON, technology, which gives it more power, better heat resistance, and stronger performance than older gauze-based designs. This radar supports many modes, air-to-air, -air, ground mapping, synthetic aperture radar, and more, making the plane highly versatile. On top of that, the Tejas MK2 is fitted with a fully indigenous mission computer created by HAL and DRDO, an open architecture system that merges navigation, sensor fusion, and weapons management into one. The open architecture makes future upgrades easier, reducing dependence on foreign technology over time. An advanced electronic warfare suite designed by DRDO gives this fighter excellent self-protection, radar warning, jamming, and countermeasures are integrated for hostile environments. In terms of propulsion, the MK2 uses the GEF 414INS 6 engine. This is a big step up over what earlier Tejas models used, delivering higher thrust about 98 kN, which translates to better payload capacity, speed, and performance. This extra power, combined with its aerodynamic design, enables a payload capacity of up to 6,500 kg for a variety of weapon types, giving the aircraft a strong multirole capability. As for operational performance, the aircraft is targeted to hit speeds of roughly Mach 1.8, making it a very capable supersonic jet. Its combat radius is expected to be around 1,500 kilometers, with a ferry range with external tanks even higher, depending on the mission configuration. These figures give it enough reach to perform both air superiority and ground attack roles effectively, whether close to Indian borders or on longer missions. On the timeline front, the first prototype rollout is expected in November-December 2025, followed by ground tests like taxi trials, and then the maiden flight slated for Q1 2026. HAL plans to build four pre-production prototypes by around 2027-2028, flying over a thousand sorties to validate the aircraft systems, aerodynamics, and weapon integration. After that, HAL is aiming for initial operational clearance by 2028, with full-scale production beginning in 2029 and deliveries to the Indian Air Force by 2032 or thereabouts. The Tejas MK2's indigenous content is also very impressive. HAL and DRDO are pushing for over 80% Indian parts in early variants, and expect that number to rise further, particularly once they localize engine production and other subsystems. This drive not only supports India's, Make in India, initiative, but also ensures that maintenance, upgrades, and future variants remain within the country's industrial and technological ecosystem. Despite the many strengths, there are real challenges. Integrating advanced systems like the GAN-based UTOM radar and complex EU suites isn't trivial, any mismatch or technical glitch could delay certification. There's also the risk of cost overruns, 
Although development funding is big, sustained production and maintenance will demand consistent investment. Then there's competition. While MK2 is modern, it's a 4.5 generation jet, not a stealth fifth gen, so India must ensure it remains relevant in a shifting global defense market. Strategically, however, the MK2 has huge potential. It's not just about replacing old jets like MiG-29s or Jaguars in the IAF, it's about building a truly indigenous backbone for future air force strength. With its modern radar, open architecture systems, and high payload, it could become attractive to export customers as well, especially those looking for capable but cost-effective medium-weight fighters. In short, the Tejas Mk-2 is shaping up to be a cornerstone of India's next-generation aerospace capability. If HAL hits its targets, both in development and production, this jet could redefine India's air combat power for decades.